I'm Sabine Avat, Director of the Kinlock Commons for Critical Pedagogy and Leadership at the University of Pittsburgh. Welcome to the Digital Freedom Leadership Project. This project consists of a series of brief conversations with leaders reflecting on one of their guiding principles. The project is designed as a resource to support educational leaders doing freedom work everywhere. Joining us for a conversation about one of his leadership principles is Dr. Nino Testa. Dr. Testa served as the inaugural Associate Director of Women and Gender Studies at Texas Christian University from 2017 to 2022. At TCU, he's also Associate Professor of Professional Practice in the Department of Women and Gender Studies. Nino has previously worked as the director of the LGBT Center at Tufts University, where he held roles at the Women's Center and Asian American Center. As development associate at the Feminist Press at CUNY, Dr. Testa was an ACLS Public Humanities Fellow. Dr. Testa's drag persona, Maria Von Clapp, appears at TCU classes and programs, as well as local community events in Dallas, Fort Worth. His most recent scholarly publication, If You Are Reading It, I Am Dead, Activism, Local History, and the AIDS Quilt, was published last year in The Public Historian. Nino, thank you for joining me in conversation today as part of the Digital Freedom Leadership Project. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really looking forward to chatting. And I love me the project. <laughs> So I'll jump in and I'll start by asking you the first of our, our two questions. And I'm sorry, the cat's jumping on the table and shaking everything. So. Uh, don't apologize for cats. <laughs> what would we do without them? <laughs> we love cats. <laughs> um, and, and the first question is just to describe one of your leadership principles. What is it? But with and from whom did you learn it? So mm -hmm. Where did it come from and how did it develop? Yeah. Um, it's a great question, um, and I really enjoyed reflecting on it. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about humility um, and what humility has meant to me as a leader or as a teacher or as someone who collaborates and works with others. Um, and I guess what I mean by it first is is just very simply that like it's okay to not know everything that we don't know everything, and that it's and that being humble about what we know and what our experiences are and um, and about you know, just how, what we've accomplished or what we've done uh, is a really important principle to me for a lot of reasons. Um, because, well, I guess first I would say uh, where I learned it from, you know, I kind of feel like I came up in um, an academic setting where humility was not practiced. So I guess I learned from like what I was not seen happen. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, it, I felt I've always felt like in both when I was an undergrad and then uh, in, in graduate school, even like that there was this feeling of like mastery was what it was all about. Like, can I show that I know the most, that I am the smartest, that I have the answers? And just like time after time, it felt like that failed me in my work. Like it failed me to feel uh, like I had to perform that mastery. I wasn't good at performing that mastery. Um, and it made for like less interesting conversations with people. It made for less interesting classes, I think less successful classes, to be honest. Um, it definitely felt like it made for less successful community engaged work and collaboration. Um, but I think it was a hard thing to shake because I feel like that's that was the model that I had for so long was the, the thing that we do in school is try to be really smart and show people how smart we are. And, and it's hard to do that and be humble or, or, to, or to practice humility um, because they're you know kind of in tension with each other. Um, so I don't know, I guess I would say that I learned it from my students. <laughs> like I learned by watching my students, like my, some of my like most interesting students say I don't understand that <laughs> like I, and I don't or I don't know what you mean by that asking questions and having to kind of um engage with them uh and to they're not impressed by maybe the things that some you know so someone in graduate school might be impressed by they want to really talk about something they really want to understand and they really want to engage and bring what they know to this space and so 
learning from my students about what it is like to narrate your process of learning was humbling to me and helped me to value or understand the value of, of, of that humility, understand the value of narrating my own uncertainties or my own questions, my own struggles of understanding. Um, um, and that that's been a really important part of my kind of journey through leadership or understanding myself as a leader, I guess. Yeah, so I hear you describing this um, interesting conundrum, I think, which is that to learn, if I'm hearing you right, means to be uncertain, to express that uncertainty, and to kind of work it out in relationship. And yet, the message and the and the evaluation of students is to not how certain are they mm -hmm. so it's it creates this antithetical tension um and and so i'm i'm hearing you describe a conundrum in which you know you have to learn from the observing the processes of people actually doing the learning rather than people performing the knowing mm -hmm. so did i get it right yeah, and actually, even in hearing you read narrate it to me, I like I love the idea of maybe like my principle is uncertainty. Like, what is like, like like giving the space for that uncertainty, and that like we're all uncertain, and that we're all unsure, and that, um, yeah, uh, it's a different orientation towards learning and towards conversation, even just conversation with people, and it applies, I think, really broadly to not just the teaching, but you know, when I've like had. Um, staff, like if I've been like a, you know, in the supervisor role and had to work with staff or any, anywhere where you feel like there's this like false authority that you're having there that you have over people. Um, and I felt the pressure to perform having it all together that never actually makes people feel better about what you're doing. It makes them feel like, if anything, more resentful of you that you think that you know better when you, we all know that you don't know everything, right? Because no one does. And it just opens up so much more space to acknowledge that. And so maybe humility isn't even the best word for it, but it feels like it names it for me because I think about it in relation to the performance of mastery that has really come to characterize so much of my understanding of academia, um, but also more broadly in the world when we see the way that um, I think that people engage with knowledge, um, um, you see it. Social media maybe. Social media, for instance, right? Certain, the, the certainty, I'm so jealous of it, but like the absolute certainty that someone has when they type the thing and then they tweet the thing. I'm like, wow. Like, and I used, I got off of all the social media anyway, because, precisely because I didn't feel like I could engage it, perform it the way that it was meant to be done while also like living in that reality of, I have, but I have questions. I have this strong feeling of certainty and here are the 12 questions I have underneath it. Um, that aren't just questions that aren't just like theoretical questions. They are also like understanding questions. Like I have like 10 to 12 things I don't understand, but I want to go read more about or talk to people about or learn about before I could be certain. Right. right? Um, and yeah, I think, I think that that's really, especially in a really in classes that the opportunity to like cultivate that where I'm not actually asking you to pretend that you know everything. What does that even mean to know everything? You know, um, which is a beautiful segue into question two or prompt two, which is, you know, would you share a story or a couple stories with people watching or listening about how you put humility into action or into use? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, I guess one, uh, one way I'm, I'm thinking about very specifically um, this happened um, last fall, I was teaching um, a queer theories class, and we were reading a won't name won't name names a canonical text. We'll say <laughs> that is a challenging canonical text, um, and it's one that you know I think a lot of people maybe even shy away from teaching to undergrads. Right? Complicated or whatever. Um, and I remember the first, I, when I first was teaching, I would teach this text. But it was almost like, oh, didn't this thing just blow your mind? And their minds were never blown. And I was like, I don't understand how your minds aren't blown right now. You know, like, um, and then a couple of years ago, we read it and they narrated all of the 
doubts that they had about it. And they were like, but what is it? You know, I don't even know what this person is talking about. Like, what do these words even mean? And I just like, I was like, you know what? Let me tell you a story about the first time I read this chapter <laughs> or this essay. And um, just narrating it and just saying, here are all the things I didn't understand. But here And here are two to three things that I still puzzle over <laughs> when I read them. And I have to like, I'll be honest that I don't know exactly fully what that means. Um, and they, we ended up having such a wonderful conversation about it. And I kept saying like, cause someone said like, oh, I felt really stupid reading this text. And that was like, you know, broke my heart to even hear that a student would think that or that I would introduce a text that could make a person feel stupid or that that was not my goal. But, you know, I thought back on it and I was like, you know what, like, if you don't narrate your own experience of not understanding, aren't you kind of expecting them to feel stupid? <laughs> like, if you can't put yourself there and say, this is what it means to not understand fully. Um, here's how we engage with difficulty or challenging or complex ideas or what it felt like to me to be thrown into a discourse that I was not familiar with, because that's what it is. A lot of people are engaging in a conversation, so they've built up a certain language. You're not stupid because you haven't done that in this context, right? Um, it was just a really green kind of moment in the class where there was laughter and there was, you know, conversation. And I just, I saw students open up to the conversation in a different way. And I just never in a million years would have thought I would have a conversation like that when I was a grad student. I thought the point was I go in there and I know this thing, I know more, and I know more than you know about it. And and um, it just kind of flipped my whole understanding of how to engage with teaching and with 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 difficult texts or any text. I love that story, and it's reminding me of. Um working with you at Tufts and watching you, you know, lead the LGBT center, um, but really invite students in to be uncertain and to try things and some that I'm more familiar with and some that I'm less familiar with, but like Black and Pink and the Audre Lorde project. And, you know, you really did the thing you're describing, which is to, um, learn alongside students and to narrate to students how you were thinking and what you were wondering about. And um, I think it's a reason that students flocked to that center for sort of every reason you might be somewhere at a university. Um, so I, I love the story because it sort of yeah. reflects what I know about you. That's very sweet of you, very kind of you. Um, and yeah, you know, and hearing you even mention black and pink, it brings back all these good memories too. Um, thinking about, you know, I what I was learning about uh, there the were I I started with the students. They came to me and said, "We want to do this thing," and I was like, "Yeah, let's do that together." And I learned about um, these queer perspectives on incarceration that I didn't, you know, maybe I had some general knowledge or whatever, but I was learning. And we had these pen pals that we developed relationships with together. Uh, it was really meaningful that we learned how to, to be a, a good pen pal um, to an incarcerated person together. Um, and I'm still, I'm still a pen pal to, uh, we don't pen pen as much, we call more now than we pen pal, but um, um, but uh, yeah, it was really special to to do that with the students. Um, the same thing, I'm teaching a class on drag every, it's on every spring, um, it's my third year teaching it. I'm not, I'm you know, you mentioned my persona, I'm not a, professional drag performer, you know, like I, I really want students to know that drag is an, an art form that is accessible to you. It is a knowable art form with a history that you can engage with and practice and learn from and come in and out of feeling like you're good at it or not. But like, it's not some big, scary outside in the world thing that you can't do. I'll do it with you. And that, that was really where the class came from. We had this drag show where students student um, perform, it was hard to encourage students to perform because they felt like, well, I don't know how to do drag, how am I just gonna suddenly do the drag show? So we'll do a class, we'll read some books, we'll talk to some drag performers, we'll do some make, we'll play around. Um, and I thought if I, if I, how can we expect them to get up there and do it if we're not gonna get up there and do it with them? So that's why I started doing drag with, with the students because otherwise, you know, how would they have done it, you know? Um, 
so yeah, it took being like, if you can't, if you're not feeling particularly humble, uh, you should try and do drag next to Sapphire Davenport and Tara Saint Stone and all these other queens who came to do the show were like amazing and all, but they're like a little shake and go wig or whatever. Like, you know, it's like, be humble. Like you're, I'm not, I'm, uh, we're all learning how to do it together and it's fun. Thank you for this. I love all the dimensions of this conversation, the, the sort of uncertainty and solidarity and humility and relationship and learning by doing. And um, I appreciate the conversation. Thank you. It's been great to talk about it. <laughs>